Welcome to the Logic Game Life Coaching Podcast, episode 35. Everyone wants happiness and success, and we know how to get you there. Come listen to the Leadership Society of Arizona as we teach a proven logic to help you simplify life, overcome challenges, and predict the future. You're listening to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. We have Dr. Jacob and Kay on once again. Okay, um, so Kay's got another question for you. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's hear it, Kay. All right, here it goes. If I control my own life, how come things happen to me that I don't want? And I, I believe that I can control my actions, but I can't control other things that impact me. Great question. And this one is probably a lot easier than your previous question to answer. And it's really to remember that although you can control your actions and your life, you can't control the, the effects of natural law. So for example, you can determine to walk off a cliff that's like 2,000 feet high, but you can't control what happens after you walk off that cliff. The natural law is going to, to automatically make you fall down and probably die, right? You can't say, I'm going to walk off this cliff, but I'm going to make it so that I stay just right there and I don't have to fall and the law of gravity doesn't affect me. Does that make sense? Yes. So in other words, I guess you can control your actions, but you are still required to work within the law, within the natural laws of the universe. Okay, so ask well, some more questions here. Okay, so if if you're saying we don't have any control over the effects of our actions, how do we better understand the effects oh. before we do that? You know, that's a really good question. Um, how do you learn cause and effect? Trial and error. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but unfortunately in life, that's a lot of our learning is through trial and error. You know, we do something and then we see, oh, that wasn't the right thing to do. Now, hopefully, for things that have a big impact in your life. Before you try it out and before you actually do it, you consult with like a mentor or someone who you feel knows what, an expert, someone who knows my, maybe what the effect will be once you do a certain action, right? That now is, um, would be a, a wise thing to do. But there are some things that, um, that you, even if you know, it's very hard to accept, right? Because sometimes just the way we are, the way we act, the way we live, you know, it, it has a detriment, detrimental effect on us. And as we find that out, we're like, oh, I don't like that. But it's very hard to change what we're doing, right? And, and that's a really difficult thing. And so one of the things um, I also would suggest if you want to um, kind of accept this and, and be able to, to not be so like, you know, distraught about it is um, learning about other people. Talk to other people about their mistakes, especially older people. Older people are much more likely to tell you all the mistakes and and, and the bad things that have happened in their life because they weren't doing something, you know, the, the most accurately or in the best way. And they're most likely to let you know all the mistakes they made. But you know that they survived for so long because they're already old. So as you learn about all their mistakes and all the issues that they've had in their life, but they're still alive, you're now you're like, whoa, you know? <laughs> Even though I'm causing all this, it's okay because a lot of people have been through a lot worse than I have. <laughs> and still survived. And still survived. <laughs> oh. So always talking with other people, learning about their life and their mistakes and their issues and, 
and cause and effect in their life also can help you learn reality and to accept it, right? Um, because a lot of times, I, I think the reason why we ask this question, Kay, you know, is how come things happen to me that I don't want to happen to me is because um, we, we don't want anything bad to happen to us. We want to be perfect, <laughs> right? We want to do everything the best way, pass all the tests, um, make all the monies, um, <laughs> you know, have all the kids without having to spend sleepless nights and worry about how they're going to turn out and, you know, all this stuff, right? We, we want to have everything perfect in our life. And, and so, of course, we're going to have things happen to us that we don't want to happen to us. But, um, but as we learn, as we grow, um, it allows us to be a little bit more patient with that and with ourselves and um, accept it more. Okay. All right. How about the, um, the instance when someone else's actions or someone else's choices are impacting me? Like those uh, consequences uh, uh. of their choice affect me. And again, I can't control natural laws. Yes. I can control how I maybe respond, but how does that how does that work? Yes. Now, this is a tough one um, because as you bring in other people, it makes things more complex because just yourself, that's one thing. But now you're dealing with multiple other people and their lives and what's been going on in your environment. And, and there's so many variables with this. But this is what I can say. Is that when you're looking at your interaction with other people, that... Um, the way you, you kind of control this still in your own life is that you determine who's in your life, right? You determine based upon what your interests are, based upon your genetics and your family, based upon how you're thinking, your religious beliefs, um, everything, based upon everything about you, you attract certain people into your life with certain characteristics. And so the who you are and if you look throughout your life based upon what you're thinking what your goals were what you really wanted it it actually brought you into contact with different people in your life and some people they came in and they left and some people have stayed with you and are, are good friends with you for a long time um if you determine and you shape who comes into your life and which of these people will enter your life then how they interact with you and what they do, you know, in relationship to you has something to do with who you are. Does that make sense? Yes. And so it's not like their whole person, this whole individual represents who you are, but how they interact with you and, and them even interacting with you, somehow it's something about you that has caused them to come in, right? Whether it's, it's like the, the um, Amazon box delivery person, <laughs> you know, you, you bought something, you needed something delivered, it required a, a delivery person. So the delivery person is meeting you here because you, you needed something coming from a certain location, whatever it might be. And so everyone coming into your life, you're actually attracting them somehow. And, and so that's kind of how you actually do control who comes into your life and kind of how they interact with you even though you don't actually control everything they do or, you know, exactly why they did what they did. Um, and so you'll find that the more that you realize who you are and what you do, the more you can shape the interactions you have with other people. Not only how you react to what they do, but actually what they do, right? For example, you know, if you go to football games and events I have hockey games and whatnot events where people get riled up more of a chance that your interaction will be kind of like hey you know physical and like fist bumping and maybe fights or whatnot depending on whose team is winning whatnot but the more you go to like like um ballets and like you know maybe uh, uh you know operas and whatnot 
you don't find people getting into fights as much there, <laughs> right? Right. And so those are kind of like kind of extreme examples and whatnot, but um, it's the same thing with the small interactions in our life. You know, based upon if we like to argue with people, you'll find that you attract more people who will like get into, um, you know, discussions with you and whatnot. So, um, I, I guess, does that help answer your question, Kay? Um, You're saying that I attract people, I, did, I choose who I invite into my life, and um, there are certain locations or circumstances where I can expect certain things to happen. Yes. And so the more aware of that you become, the more you can actually, you can feel and know you have more control over what people actually interact with you and what they do to you. Okay. That makes sense, but it, I, I suppose that's the tricky part is being able to predict all around me because, you know, yes. I, I see what you're saying, though. Yes. And, you know, for the sake of, of not having to argue um, a, a really big debate here, for the most part, you know, I'm willing to concede that there are some things maybe you don't you have no control over. Right. But for the most part, if you know that what you're doing can can help to decide who you hang around and also how they interact with you, then for the most part, you can really, you know, find more control over your life. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a solution. Maybe not um, a foolproof solution, but <laughs> yeah, say ninety eight percent of the time. <laughs> All right, and that's a start. That's I mean that yes, that's a great start. Thank you for that advice. You're welcome, Kay, and thanks for being on. Oh, it's my pleasure. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Jacob, for answering Kay's questions. We appreciate your time, and we hope our listeners enjoyed listening and our viewers enjoyed watching. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to the Logic and Life Coaching Podcast. It would be great if you could take a moment to write us a review. For any questions, comments, or topics that you would like to have addressed on the show, email the team at team at leadaz.org. To learn more about the Leadership Society of Arizona, visit us at leadaz.org.